Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This will be my new Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse video for that new short film they just released called The Spider Within. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs and references. I know there's some questions about why they made this just in general, so I'll explain that. We also know a lot about what's happening in Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse, so I'll talk about that during this video too. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. There's a lot, a lot of Spider-Man stuff happening this year. Like we have Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse is coming out in the next couple of years. It's still gonna be a while before that comes out. But we do have that Spider-Man TV show called Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man coming out at the end of this year. That'd be more of an MCU thing with a different version of Tom Holland's version of Spider-Man. But if you have no idea what's going on, like why is there this Spider-Verse short film? What happened? Why didn't we see this during Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse when the DVD was released? What Sony did is they had a different group of Spider-Verse people make this short film in partnership with a special program that they were sponsoring with the Kevin Love Foundation because it costs a lot of money to animate this even though it's a short film. So it's sort of meant to be like a side story inside the Spider-Verse. Like you don't have to watch this to understand what's going on during Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse. It's just sort of like an additive special episode within this universe. And it's all about Miles working through his own mental problems, his own panic attacks that he's having since he's become Spider-Man. The whole reason why Kevin Love specifically got involved with this through his foundation is because it's mostly focused on mental health issues. He started having panic attacks a number of years ago, even though he's this high-performing, high-earning NBA player. So generally, the short film is meant to promote positive mental health, like working through your problems, talking through them with people as Miles talks through his problems with his father instead of bottling them all up inside. At the beginning, you see Miles returning from fighting some of his villains. All of them are meant to be Spider-Man villains from the Ultimate Universe in the comics. Like, his universe is the Ultimate Universe, basically. The street sign with the fine on it is a super high dollar amount. When they went to the burger place in the first film, the prices were all super high because inflation in his universe is just completely out of control. I'm not totally sure who the Spider-Man villain here with the massive fist, like the gauntlet he's fighting is. The glove looks kind of leathery, but the closest person would be like the Shocker based on the colors, but the Shocker doesn't have gauntlets like this in his universe. These gauntlets look a little more old timey, something like Hercules would wear, but there is no version of Hercules in his universe yet. Notice his textbooks from school, you have Homer's Odyssey, that's a classic all school kids, and at least in America, are required to read it at some point. They flash a couple different scenes, you see the building crushing him, like he starts to feeling the weight of the world from all of his adventures start to metaphorically and literally crush him. When he starts to have these panic attacks, these mental issues, it's not too dissimilar from what happened to Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man in Spider-Man 2 when he developed a quote-unquote mental block that caused him to be unable to use his powers. We kind of joked about it during Spider-Man No Way Home. You never had a web block? Because I run out of webs all the time. That's... And it's a hassle. But I, I did, actually. You said that. I was like, oh... I had a web block. Whoa, why? Yeah. Existential crisis stuff. <sighs> yeah, I mean, like... His father surprises him when he comes home scaring him, making a Jason reference watching horror movies. They got a bunch of family pictures on the wall here, too. We've seen some of them in previous movies. Zoom and Enhance, notice this is a picture of Miles with Stan Lee, the shop owner from Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. He couldn't be in Across the Spider-Verse because Stan Lee had passed away when that came out. May he rest in peace, but of course you couldn't avoid having a Stan Lee reference during this. This is just another one of him when he was younger in his basketball jersey before he got the spider bite. They make a bunch of jokes about his dad actually renting movies because this is meant to take place in present day. And in present day, Blockbuster has been out of business for a long time. Like there is like one single Blockbuster that exists in the world. But at least in the New York City area, there aren't really that many places you could actually rent movies from. Now, like in Los Angeles, for instance, there are a couple boutique stores where you can still rent movies. But it's a very, very, very small thing. Which is why he makes the joke about him driving all the way to Jersey. Like, did you have to drive to Jersey to find a rental store? Zoom and enhance again. Notice he's got the Sony branded headphones because this is a Sony movie product placement. Tom Holland's Spider-Man, all the characters in the MCU Spider-Man movies also always use Sony phones for that same reason. There are also special rules about people using iPhones in movies too. Like Apple generally doesn't care about people using iPhones in their movies. Like they don't pay for product placement. But if you've never noticed, they don't allow villains in movies to actually use iPhones, which is why anytime a villain is using a phone, it's just some sort of generic branded phone. Notice he's got this superhero poster on his wall. The coloring almost makes it look like Icarus's suit from the Eternals, but I have no idea why they would make Eternals references inside the Sony Spider-Verse movies. Like it's not even the same universe. Then he starts to have his full-blown panic attack. 
Most of his room is meant to look exactly like it does in the other Spider-Verse movies. Like he's got the Gundam in the background, there are other references to other Spider-Verse things, like that the toy spider buggy, which he saw the living version of during Across the Spider-Verse in the Spider-Force building. In this universe, all the Spider-Man toys and cartoons, though, are meant to be based on this original Peter Parker Spider-Man who died in the first film. Remember, they had cartoons based on him that were meant to be patterned after the 1960s Spider-Man TV series. Notice Miles also has the Peter Porker toy. This is his old spider suit with the spray-painted logo on it that's broken. When he's lying in bed, you notice he's still wearing his special Miles Morales branded edition Jordans. They actually made some special versions of these in real life, too. He starts hallucinating the evil version of himself manifesting as his shadow. The yellow eyes are meant to be spider's eyes, and it morphs into a spider later, thus the title, The Spider Within. There's a purple crate in the background you notice. It's meant to be kind of a reference to his uncle, the Prowler, in this universe because we're still in the ultimate universe here. But you could also think of it as foreshadowing to the Miles Prowler in Earth-42, who they're just referring to as Miles G. Morales. The main Miles is Miles B. Morales. The spider within pushes him into a deeper hallucination. Everything turns red around him like he's fully in his nightmare here. And he's basically reliving his battle with the kingpin on the subway train with the spider within being kind of like a version of kingpin. Like it starts morphing and becoming bigger as it turns into a spider. Massive like kingpin was. And it's because they're referencing that kingpin fight, which is why he tries to take it out first by punching it with the spider sting ability the same way he took out kingpin at the end of the first movie. But because this is a nightmare, it doesn't work. The rules of physics don't apply in dreams. Full on mutates into an actual giant spider further towards the title, the spider with it, like it literally turns into a spider. The yellow spider eyes become more spider-like. And if it wasn't clear because they don't show you the entire giant spider here, it's meant to be turning into the spider that bit him, like a giant version of the spider that gave him the spider bite. And remember, we learned that this is the number 42 spider from Alchemax that was pulled across the multiverse in an experiment by Spot when he was testing the Super Collider working for Kingpin before he also became the Spot as well. It took the spider from Earth-42, depriving Miles G. Morales, like Prowler Miles, of his spider bite so that he never became a version of Spider-Man in that universe, implying that everything going to crap in that universe, his father dying at the hands of the Sinister Six cartel, are all Miles B. Morales' fault for essentially stealing the Spider-Man powers from him. That was what they were hyping up at the end of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, where the wheels were starting to spin in his head and he was starting to figure out like, oh wow, you turned into the Prowler, you didn't turn into Spider-Man because I got the spider bite because of what Spot had told him earlier in the movie. I think that's meant to be a misdirect though, like they just want to tease them fighting at the beginning of Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse, then they will team up. Like eventually they will help each other because they tried to imply in some of the deleted scenes too that Miles G. Morales, like Prowler Miles, was more of a vigilante, not an actual villain. All the villains in that universe are part of the Sinister Six cartel, like their universe's version of the Sinister Six, basically. So it sounds like some of that movie will be spent fighting them. Then he falls through his nightmare back into his bedroom as the spider chases him, blows up into hundreds of tiny spiders attacking him, start crawling into his mouth, too. And he starts crawling up all over his walls, his ceiling. Notice the picture of Spider Gwen in the background from his notebook. We saw that in Across the Spider-Verse. She was actually kind of making fun of him, too, like, wow, there are a lot of drawings of me in this. And if it wasn't clear as he's crawling all over the walls, he crawls up onto the ceiling and the frame sort of flips around. So when he's sitting here against the windows, he's actually on the ceiling. It's just the frame is reversed, so it looks like he's sitting on the floor. It transitions back to him in the real world. That's why it's not red anymore around him, but he's still curled up in a ball, still on the ceiling. And he finally crawls down off of the ceiling and goes to talk to his father about all of his fears, his insecurities, his panic attacks that he's having. They go for a walk outside. When he starts talking through his problems, he also starts with his regular day school problems. Notice he also mentions Gawanda again because his parents still think that's her real name. And over the end credits, they flash a couple different scenes and they use a new song. Like it's not a brand new song, but it's a song that wasn't used in previous Spider-Verse movies. Zoom and enhance in the background. There's another purple light coming from the upstairs window. That's another Prowler reference. They pan across a couple different scenes, particularly inside his bedroom. Like this is his broken mask again. This is his desk with all of his drawings from his notebook. This is the Gwen picture from the far right. He's got many, many Gwen pictures. The number 23 is a Jordan reference. This is one of his cans of spray paint that he uses to do graffiti art. They switch around different viewpoints in his bedroom, but we've all seen these different things before. Like his bedroom isn't that different. But like I said, generally the whole reason why they made this, like the general message of it is that you should talk through your problems with your loved ones as he's talking through his problems with his father. 
all meant to promote positive mental health, like working through your problems. There are a couple of new things that we've learned about Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse 2. We do know that they're making a live-action Miles Morales movie after Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse. Like, there are a couple of things they're doing with this version of Miles before they bring him into live-action, but they haven't said exactly how that's going to work. They also confirmed that we'll finally see the Japanese Spider-Man in his mech Leopardon during Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse. They'd actually said previously he was supposed to show up during Across the Spider-Verse during all the Spider-Verse scenes where you see like hundreds and hundreds of different versions of Spider-Man, but for whatever reason, they just removed him from Across the Spider-Verse. I think maybe just to save some stuff for the next movie, like there'll be a bunch of other versions that we didn't see in Across the Spider-Verse. But if there's any other Easter eggs or references that you spotted in this short movie that I didn't talk about in the video, just write them below in the comments. And of course, I'll do more Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse videos as we get more footage from that. Big reminder too, we're in the middle of X-Men episodes happening right now. Be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss any of those. Everybody click here for all of those and click here for all my Deadpool and Wolverine videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.